Hi everyone, it's Aaliyah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to attempt to show you guys how I put together um, those envelope journals. These ones, the ones that have the little matching envelope inside, uh, matching journal inside. Um, I'm not the best when it comes to tutorials, but I will do my best to try to explain exactly how I do it. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully you'll understand. So I did start this one and then I realized maybe I'll just turn my camera on and bring you along. So I stopped, got my camera, and here we are. The first thing that you have to figure out is what size journal you want. And let me just grab my envelope punch board. This is how I decided. Um, my actual journal is, I don't know if you can see that there, four by six. So I had to cut my envelope paper at eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Now, you know, depending on what size you want your journal, you just match it up with the card size. I wanted a four by six journal, so I followed the measurements here. If you want to do a journal that was say three by four, you just follow the measurements there. So mine is four by six. Had to cut a paper out that's, um, so it measures eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And then obviously you know, well, hopefully you know how to use the envelope punch board. Once you get your paper, you look at the score line marks, three and three eighths. You put your paper in, line up the corner, three and three eighths, punch it, score, all the way around. So, hopefully you can see that. I folded it already this way. And then that's when I realized, oh, I should stop. So, that's what I did so far. So, I'm at this point here, uh, and you wanna, the pattern, on the inside so you're folding in because technically this is going to be the inside of your envelope and then the fabric covers the outside. So since I, I have trouble with patterns like this on the fabric as you can see you know they go a certain way so I'm trying to figure out and I think it's like this what I want to do see when the top flap comes down how it's lined up right normally I just line it up against the corner like this but then if you fold it down see the patterns a little bit like crooked so I'm going to line it up this way and hopefully I'm gonna stay on frame the whole time because I might have to sit down for some of it just because um, it's easier for me to work on it if I'm sitting down so I'll try to keep it as still as I can because I know I'm in frame right now this is the glue that I use. I like the Fabri-Tac. Um, I didn't always like it. My friend Danny told me I should start using it, so I did. And I really do like it. But again, you know, use the glue that works for you. I don't know if all glues work the same with fabric, um, but the Fabri-Tac does. And what I do is, actually, I'm gonna start with this one. You're basically just gluing the, um, paper down to the fabric and if you hear a meowing in the background that's my cat she just came in I don't know what she wants but she's here so once you get one little corner stuck down you don't have to be so careful because now you can just finish gluing the rest and I am um, I usually glue one side and then I glue the middle and then I work out from there if that makes sense but you know obviously do it however you want and there's some actually some um, fabrics that I put on top and I have the cardstock on the bottom sometimes I do it that way too just depending but this one is fine but you know like what I mean like sometimes I'll have it the fabric like this and I'll glue it down this way and then lift it up glue and then push it down this way so whatever is easier for you is what I suggest you do but this way is easier for me for this fabric and then glue this one down 
And um, after I do this, I'm going to sew it. So it's not like you have to completely saturate your um, paper with the glue because I am going to sew around the edges. But I just want this glue down first just to kind of basically hold it together. Um, but like I said, we're going to be sewing it down. So you don't have to worry too much about how much glue you have as long as it stays on. But if you know, if you want to put a lot of glue, you can do that too. And then this one here. All right. Now that I'm finished with that, what I like to do is I take my metal ruler and I take my rotary cutter. And this was a gift from Sparkling Char. Char, thank you so much. I'm using this and I love it. Um, and what I do is I just line up the edges here, cut, cut, cut. So I'm going to pause it real quick while I cut it and I'll be right back. All right, so I am back now and I have, oops, dropping stuff over here. And I have it all cut out as you can see, but it's still, oops, no, you can't see. It's still a square. So what I wanna do, um, let me hold this up and maybe you'll see it. You know when you do an envelope punch, how it makes a little punch mark in the corner? Oh, no, you can't see. There we go. This mark right here. I just wanna cut those out with my scissors. And is it going to come out perfect? No, but that's okay because that's the beauty of junk journaling. Well, technically, this is an envelope. It's not a junk journal, but the junk journal is inside the envelope. And once you fold it, you don't even notice. But, I mean, it's pretty easy as long as you just kind of cut the V shape or the U shape out. That's all you got to do. And then one last one here. So I hope so far this is understandable. Um, a lot of times I forget and I just automatically assume people know what I'm talking about. So sometimes, and I know I've said this before, um, I don't explain everything just right. Okay, so see, here is our little envelope. So now what I wanna do is the top, I mean, I guess with this pattern it doesn't really matter, but I'm just gonna use this as a top. I wanna, round the edge because I like the way that looks and of course it only is going to punch the paper and then you just have to cut the material after you just kind of round it a little bit and I actually didn't cut so close to the edge on this so I'm just trimming it up a little bit okay so we are good now what I'm going to do is I want to going to pause it again I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and basically what I do is I just run a stitch all oops I don't know if you can see it but I run a stitch all the way around the whole thing only the outside nothing on the inside just the outside so let me run it through my sewing machine and I shall be right back actually before I do that I forgot the most important part well, not the most important part, but one of the important parts. So see how this here is sticking up? I don't actually want it to stick up. Um, what I do is I want to fold it in a little bit. So I just see where the corners are here and here. I line my ruler up with each of the corners and I um, fold it this way first. And then I want to fold it this way. See, so it makes like a nice clean edge here so let me just take my bone folder and just kind of squish it down a tad and then I'm just going to take some glue and make sure that is glued down nice and securely and also remember I mean we are going to be sewing it down so just enough to keep it down as we sew okay so, and then when I sew it, when I come down here, I just pass right over here and then keep going there. So now I'm gonna pause it again and bring it to my sewing machine. Be right back. All right, so I just finished sewing around and I realized it's still light outside. So hopefully there's enough light coming in um, that it's not too dark and shadowy, um, but we'll see.
So as you can see, I don't know, maybe you can see it better on this side. We have sewn all the way around the edges. And now it's time to close up our envelope. So here we have the top, and that's gonna be the flap that comes down. This, this so what I'm gonna do is put the sides in. I'm gonna fold that up, and I'm actually gonna grab my chair so I can sit down to be closer to what I'm doing so I do it correctly. All right, so what I like to do is I just turn the envelope sideways, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a bead of glue this way, this way, here and here and hopefully you're able to see what I'm doing so here 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 and here you don't put it here because that's going to be this part um, and then obviously you know your envelope will stay shut so let me get the glue down I want to glue right here up this way down this way and back up this way and just spread it out just a tad bit just to make sure everything is coated and what I do when I squish it down I'm just putting a glassing bag in here just in case any glue does spill out um, like through the stitching or anything like that it won't stick the envelope together so I just hold it just for just for a minute because I want to make sure that the Fabri-Tac has time to grab and I have glue on my finger so I have to remember not to touch anything with that finger So I think that's, for now, good enough. Obviously, you know, we're gonna let it dry a little bit, but I like to look, look inside just to make sure nothing is stuck and it's not. So this is how it's coming along so far. Next thing I do is, doo -doo -doo, if I can find my little Velcro strips, here it is. I'm gonna put the Velcro on now. And of course, you don't have to use Velcro. I use Velcro. If you know how to do buttons or snaps or magnets, whatever you wanna do, do what you want. Me, I'll use the Velcro. Number one, because I have Velcro. Um, but number two, I just, I don't mind the Velcro. So, um, when I put it on, they are sticky. I just don't trust the stickiness um, because it is going to be open and closed a lot so what I do is I also add the Fabri-Tac glue and put it right there and I always add too much and it always squishes out so let me just do that all right so I'm not putting the other one on just yet only because I like to make sure that kind of grabs a little bit more before I start to mess around with putting the other piece on um, because I don't want it to move so while that's drying just a tad bit and I'll put this here I'm going to set it aside and then show you what else I did so as you know obviously the journal needs to be done too um, and this is the size of my journal and let's just make sure I wasn't fibbing so it is actually right under four. Oh, you know why because I cut it a little bit shorter so when I cut the paper I cut the paper at seven and three-fourths by six um, and I did that because I don't want it to be when it goes down in the envelope, I don't want it to be right at the edge and maybe be hard to close. So instead of cutting eight across, I cut it to seven and three quarters just to make it a little bit shorter. And then this is gonna be the inside cover. And just like the other one, let me just grab the material again. Um, and I know it has to go a certain way, so it's actually actually this way and this one's easy because um, yeah I want it like this so that way 
there's the front and then this is the inside front cover yeah perfect and you know I try to line it up as close oh, I don't even know if I'm in frame oops hopefully I'm in frame now um, I just line it up as close to the edge as I can because I mean after we can always trim it if it's not but just so I'm not down here and I'm wasting all this material around with this paper uh, let's see just like that and it's going to be the same exact thing we're going to put glue on it and again we're also going to sew around the edges here so this is more just to make sure the cover sticks <coughs> excuse me <coughs> just spread that out a tad bit and perfect Ooh. I think I just inhaled a whole <coughs> mouthful of the glue. <coughs> okay. And then also the other side. And there we go. Perfect. All right, so what I'm going to do again, I'm going to cut here and I'm going to cut here. I'm going to pause it. Be right back. And I'm back. And what I was just thinking as I was cutting um, this material, if you don't have a rotary cutter, it doesn't matter because you can still use scissors. Like if it's kind of needs to be a little bit more trimmed, I just use my scissors. Um, and before I was gifted this cutter, that's all I used to have is scissors so you know don't think that you need to go out and buy a rotary cutter to cut material um, doing these little projects if you don't have one because you know use scissors okay so now that it's glued on what I'm gonna do again I'm gonna do one stitch all the way around the edge and I shall be right back all right, so now let me grab my chair once again. You know what? Actually, I think, yes, if I stay within this square here, I should be okay. Um, so as you can see, maybe you can see, I did the sewing all the way around. And before I do anything else, let's just check to make sure this is getting dried. And I just wiggle it a little bit, not, you know, too much, but... You can kind of see if it's caught, ca catching, cutting. I don't know if it's hold. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even speak. If it's hold, no, not if it's hold. If it's holding on tight, how about that? Which it is. So I'm gonna now take the other side and I'm gonna place it right on top. And once again, I am going to just add some glue so that it sticks forever and then see it's going to tell us where it needs to lie that's why I put the little dot on top of the other dot not try to measure where it is going to be down there and then we're just going to hold this for a minute and then after we hold it for a minute I'm going to get something to kind of lay on top of it to hold it which let's see um you know what <laughs> what was I using before maybe I was using this punch let's do that so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have the punch just sit on top of it like that off screen over here just so it you know has time to kind of dry and stick all right so we are almost finished I'm debating whether to show you how to put the pages in because if you make junk journals you pretty much know how to do it um, but maybe for those who are just starting out and would like to see it, I think I'll do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the pages. Now this part is completely up to you. It's going to be up to you what types of pages you put in, how many you put in, um, if you add anything like, say, like glassine bags or envelopes or anything like that. Whatever you want to do, this is the part where you're going to customize it to what you want in your journal. For mine because I'm making them all the same, they are going to have um, 
just uh, just, I've put three types of papers in it. I've put in coffee dyed paper. I've put in, well, well I should say co regular coffee dyed paper, you know, like the plain printer paper. I've also put in um, coffee dyed graph paper or ledger paper because I was using both of them. And then I was also putting in avocado dyed paper. So I'm going to get those papers together. I'm going to come back. I'll give you the measurements for what I measure and how I measure them. And then we can start to sew everything in. So give me a moment and I'll be right back. All right, so now, oops, sitting down again, I'm back with my papers. And um, I folded them already and try to organize them just a tad bit um, so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so this is my avocado dyed paper. I don't know if you were able to see the color, but it's so nice and pink, because I know, Danny, if you're watching, you said you wanted to see how it turned out. I love this color. And it still boggles my mind how avocados are green. I mean, the skins are green. The inside is green and like brownish too. So how does it come out to be pink? I have no idea, but I think it's the coolest thing ever. So when I was on vacation, I don't know if you watched my video, but I did a bunch of avocado dyed paper. So I'm using that. I'm using some ledger paper that's coffee dyed as well. And I'm using regular coffee dyed paper. When I say regular, I always re mean to refer to like regular printer paper and stuff. So um, I like to choose one for the front that because I, I like to put a pocket on the front, so I'm going to use this one. And it's very spotted on the inside, which is okay. And um, what I do is I just kind of organize the way I want the papers to go in. I have no rhyme or reason to it. Um, I just kind of alternate everything back and forth like so. There we go. So technically now, this is our little booklet. It's going to be sewn into here and it's going to be finished. But before I do that, as you can see, I have some cutoffs. And when I cut the paper, oh, that's right, the measurements of the paper. What I measure here is seven and a quarter by five and a half. So if you have an eight and a half piece of paper, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, so picture it like this. The first cut I'm making is at seven and a quarter. So when you cut it at seven and a quarter, this little thing gets trimmed off the edge. So instead of, um, obviously, okay, so you cut off that. And then when you turn the paper sideways, if you cut that in half, it's five and a half. So that's why it's five and a half by seven and a quarter. But um, what was I saying? I keep this because this is what I'm going to use um, let's do this one. This is what I'm going to use to make the, um, you know, those little, I don't know what you even call, would call them, little notepads or little lists things, but what I do is I just kind of put them together. Bottoms don't have to be even because I actually cut off a little chunk of the bottom just so it will fit in the book. Fold it in half. I find a little scrap of the material that, um, and I use this, so let's just, let's just cut this just a tad. Um, and I don't know, that's even, might be a little bit wide. I cut a little swatch of the material off and I just sew it across. So I, I won't do that now, I'll do it off camera because basically this is just an afterthought. You put it in, you have your little notepad here, a little lists or you know, whatever you wanna make. So that'll put aside, I'll do that on my own time. But getting back to the book, um, what I did in all of mine, I put a little pocket in the front because it's not decorated at all because I just don't want it so thick that it can't fit into the envelope. Plus when you add your own stuff, it's gonna make it thick anyway. So I'm making these completely naked except for the pocket in the front. And the pocket in the front, what I usually do is take um, an off cut of when you were cutting down the paper here, and then I'll just measure it just to become a little pocket. Ouch, hold on one second. Just to, there we go. 
And this part, I actually don't measure at all. Um, what I, I just sort of eyeball it. And uh, let me just see, let me turn that off real quick because I don't want it to come back on. Sorry. Um, so I just kind of line it up and mark where I want to cut this way. And then I decide how big I want the pocket. And I think I will, I like a pretty big pocket. Um, yeah, so like right about there. So I'm just gonna cut this and then cut this. Hold on, I don't even have to pause you. I'm just gonna take it over to my paper cutter, which is right behind me. I don't know if you can hear me anymore, but I'm just gonna cut it down a little bit. All right, so it's gonna be like this, which is perfect. And then also what I do, um, which side should I put? No, I like this side. Um, I'm just gonna put a little, it's not a real, hold on, just a little thumb pull. Just, I don't know. I didn't do an all, I started doing in the last few that I've been making, just cause it, you can tell now it's a pocket. So, um, I'm gonna sew this around and I'll be right back and we're in our final stretch. Give me one second. Okay, so we are in our final home stretch here of making this. So as you can see, I sewed around the edge there and it's just to, you know, reinforce the, po reinforce the pocket. Ah, my tongue is getting tied. I've been talking too long. It's funny because in real life, I don't talk that much, except when I'm on here. So <laughs> maybe my voice is just getting tired. So see how nice that's gonna look when it's in there? Now, as you can see, when you lay this out, I did leave a nice big border all the way around just because I thought it is a little bit nicer, um, you know, to have the pages a little bit smaller inside. And, um, I just want to, you know, give it room so it's not sticking up all the way to the edge. So all we have left to do now is sew the pages in. And um, what I use is this, I don't know what it's called, but I think it's the three hole pamphlet stitch. And that's how I bind all my journals. It's not really binding, that's how I sew all my journals. Um, so I... I'm pretty sure you could find tutorials about different stitching. I just like that one because it's the one that I learned first. Uh, it wasn't too complicated. I understood what they were doing and I was able to kind of get that one down. And this part also, I measure my holes. You don't have to, you can eyeball it, but um, I don't know. I like to measure them. So this, let me just make sure this was the front, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, for those that do make journals, you know exactly what I'm doing. For those that have never made journals, basically I'm now just poking holes for where we're going to sew. Oof. And I always got to be careful because one time I wasn't careful and I jammed this and went all the way through my finger. Luckily it was on the side. Um, which one? Oh. Maybe it's my middle finger. Oh, it was this side. And you know, my hands are kind of chubby anyway, so it just kind of skidded through the fat. I was okay, but it was like, woo, ouchy, ouch. Yeah, that wasn't very, that wasn't fun. So just be careful when you're using your little pokey tool. Okay, so I have my three holes. Um, I don't know if you can see them here. And now it's time to choose the thread to bind it. Um, I have a huge box here. And what I like to do is I try to kind of coordinate um, the thread or like, see, this would be fun actually. You know what? Never mind. We're using this one. So sometimes I do coordinate it. Sometimes I'll use a thread that just kind of um, is like nice and it just goes. I mean, you'll know. Or some people just like to use like a ivory color thread. You know, that's fine too. Whatever you like. You know, this is your project that you're making. Um, do or use whatever you want to use. 
So we're just going to sew it. So I go in through the middle and then I go to the top hole and I only know it's the top hole because see there's my pocket so I know that this is the top. And oops, oops, there we go. So we put it through the top hole. Then I go all the way to the bottom hole now, put it through the bottom hole, pull it out. And now I go up back up through the middle and what I do, hold on one second because I hear somebody yelling. Sorry about that, my husband was yelling for me to come help him. He's um, tinting our windows to the cars. Well, he finished mine yesterday and he's doing his today, but uh, his is a little bit difficult and so he needs my help. But I said, you're gonna have to wait because I'm doing my video. Okay, so I came up through here. Now we're gonna have to go back through the middle, but this is where you have to be careful because you don't want the thread, the needle to poke through the thread. So I kind of, pop it through and just make sure on this end when I see it coming through that it's not and see this one is okay hold on you don't want it to go through the other thread so okay there we go all right so I'm put my needle back I'm just going to give this a little trim right there put that back in my thread bucket and now you want to pull gently gently but tightly and we'll, we're just gonna turn it over, make sure those are nice and tight. And then each of my threads is on one side of the middle thread. Does that make sense? So they're not both on the same thread, so when you tie it, it kind of holds this in the middle. Let me bring it a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So see, here is my middle thread, and I have this thread on this side, this thread on the other side. There we go, see there's a better picture, see? All right, so now what I do, and I realized I say so a lot. <laughs> I guess that's my go-to filler word. So what I like to do is I tie one knot first, and then I do one of those double knots where I put the thing through twice and pull it down. And then I do one more just for good luck because why not, right? And then I'll just trim this a little. And there we go. I'm gonna take off my clips now. And let's just take a little look-see. So, here is the journal. We have a little pocket here, and then we have all these fun pages you can fill with you know, memories, you can put lists on them, you can put pictures on them if you want, whatever you want to do. And when it's yours, you know, you can obviously add more pockets, you can add tuck spots, you can add 